Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy and Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some great community posts plus some awesome nuggets on the gateway side if you're using a gateway. If you haven't actually had time to participate in our weekly live streams or you haven't had time to watch the replays, head over to our clips channels to watch individual questions and our responses both from Patrick and myself and from our guests dropped every day. All right, let's get into this. Nicola Illick has a blog post looking at dynamically showing tasks inside of Power BI. The magic of this is using the username or user principal name function. And typically you're going to use that for role level security. But Nicola walks you through how to actually do that to just filter content based on user or you know, if you have a specific need from that sense. It's an interesting approach to actually filter down that data that I haven't personally used, but I can definitely see the value of it if that's something you want to go down. One thing uh, at the end of the blog post, Nicola calls out that you, if you publish to the service, make sure that you switch over to the user principal name function instead of the username function. That, I'm not sure why he called that out, from the service perspective, they should both actually produce the same result. The issue is more on the Power BI desktop side because they're actually different values from Power BI desktop. So just be aware of that. And the big thing that Patrick and I really talk about is give it a try, test it, see how it responds and what the results are. And then that's how you learn more. At Allington over Accelerator BI's got a blog post talking about what is a data model. and love this blog post just because you know we talk about data models data sets semantic models all these big things and concepts and folks that are just coming to power bi they're like what does that even mean i just have data right i just have data what is this data model thing why do i even care about that and matt walks through what this actually is what's included in that data model and why you should care about it and what you need to think about when when putting that together just from a high level right it's not going too deep so if you're just getting started with power bi this is a great blog just to understand wrap your head around the concept of a data model data set semantic model those are all the same things matthew roach has a blog post continuing his series on data culture this blog post is about experts and expertise i really like this series it's diving into just from a the data culture perspective how organizations should approach data and just how to actually manage business intelligence. So it's not getting into a lot of the technical aspects of it, although there are technical aspects in it. This is more about the concepts and the broader picture of business intelligence and what you should be thinking about as you approach data, as you would approach business intelligence. So I really love these. Matthew's also got accompanying, accompanying, can't even say that word, videos that go along with these blog posts that go in deeper into those topics and his thought process. Matthew's really great at just communicating these thoughts and looking at those strategic approaches as you look at business intelligence. Definitely recommend you check this out. Links as always down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. Go check it out. We got a blog post on the Power BI blog looking at the new data source management inside of the Power Platform Admin Center. This has been a journey. It's, there's still a ways to go, but this is a great start on improving data source management with gateways and whatnot from a Power BI perspective. It is on the Power Platform Admin Center. If you're a Power BI tenant admin, you do have access to this. So be sure to check that out. Typically the folks I talk to, the actual Power BI admins, this is a pain point for them, especially for large organizations. I've gotten some initial feedback from folks saying that they actually really like this and are looking forward to the improvements that are gonna be coming for this. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on this. If you've tried it out, if you're a Power BI admin, would really love your thoughts. I actually, when I went to this, I didn't actually see it. So I don't know if it's still being deployed or not. I have talked to folks that have said that it is there. So I'm not sure why I'm not seeing it in my production tenant, but definitely let me know, check it out, play around with it. It's read only for right now, but there are comments in the blog saying that more functionality and capabilities will be coming, like the ability to add or edit data sources down the line. So looking forward to that. We got the October 2020 release of the Power BI Gateway. There are two things in here that I'm really excited for. The first 
is single sign-on support for SQL Server and Kusto. Before this was enabled just for import. So when you're using, you could use single sign-on if you were importing that data, but now it's enabled for direct query, which is great. The other thing that I'm excited to see is that the BigQuery, Google BigQuery connector, the native connector is now enabled in the gateway as well. So if you're an organization that have enabled like BigQuery through a VPC or you're going through some type of, you know, VNet type infrastructure before you with the gateway, you had to use the ODBC driver. It could be painful. It's confusing for end users. Now you can just use the native BigQuery connector you should be good to go. So make sure you've updated to the October build of the gateway to take advantage of these features. All right, I want to hand it over to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.